um, Heinz. He's got a church in um, Somerset, Somerset West. West. We needed, we could only come in, the, the, the only flight we could get him up was at five past six. And he, um, so we're going to be ministering now. We're going to sing a bit. And then um, I'm going to come back up for a short while. And then he's going to minister. Um, <clears throat> a few things about Word of Faith. Welcome to Word of Faith. I'm Pastor Richard Crompton. Um, I'm the senior pastor here, and I want to welcome all of you here to Word of Faith Christian Center. Word of Faith Christian Center believes in the, what the Bible says, in the sense of the Bible says, clap your hands, it says, shout, it says, dance. Um, we also believe that the Holy Spirit is for here and now, and we encourage you because we believe that you can experience the presence of God here, now. In 2024 year in Kabecha. And so we I, I want you to forget, I want you to relax, I want you to participate, I want you to get involved in the service, I want you to enjoy it. Because if if you guys participate, if you become part of what we're doing, then we're gonna build an altar here, and the presence of God is gonna be here in a mighty way. And when the presence of God comes, he touches and changes you. So while Heinz is an amazing singer, more than anything, we want the presence of the Holy Spirit to manifest yeah, and touch you tonight. We want you to leave different. Not that, not, not that we're saying you're bad. We're just saying, let's grow, let's grow, let's mature. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. Then secondly... If you can see these cameras, we are live streaming this on our YouTube channel, Word of Faith SA, and on Facebook. If you want to subscribe, there's a QR code. And what, let's be honest, what is the Easter holidays about? It's about looking cooler than your friends. Your friends are sunning themselves somewhere along the coast, some of them are overseas. And they are winning the social, wealth, social media war. But you guys are at a cool concert here at Word of Faith Christian Center. And so what I want to invite you to do is I want to invite you to share the link. We are live right now on Word of Faith SA on YouTube and Facebook. Yes, a pastor is telling you to take your phone out. Come on, guys, take your phones out. Let's share the link. This is where you can show that you are cooler than your friends. This is your shot. So, so send the link. Post it in your WhatsApp status. Post it on Facebook. Share it on Facebook. Let's get the, the message out. Let's touch people. Let's, let's let... Let everybody know so that they can be part of this as well. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to touch people. So we're live right now. Word of Faith SA. And, and while you're there, please hit the subscribe button. We just, we've gone just past 15,000 subscribers. And we post all our messages and that there if you want to connect with us. Okay. Everyone understand what's going on now? Great. I'm going to open in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you that your presence be here today. I pray, Lord, that we will not be self-conscious, that we will not think about ourselves, that we will concentrate on you and, the, and your presence and your glory. Help us, Father God, to experience your glory. May your anointing touch each of us here tonight. Let your glory come. Let your presence come. Let us be touched and changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good evening, church. Won't you stand with us tonight in the presence of the risen King? Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. That was a good start. You can take a seat. Say hello to someone around you, preferably they didn't come with, arrive with. And we want to welcome you to Word of Faith Christian Center. Um, we've had people arrive since I opened the service, but our, for those of you who don't know, we believe that the Word of God is true. We believe that what when God's, when the Bible says clap your hands and shout we, and, 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 and we move in the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we believe they are here for year and now and we want you to experience the intensity of the presence of the Lord and the glory of God and that's why we do things. Um, and incidentally, we're doing you a huge favor because in heaven the Bible says the hallelujahs will be like thunderclaps. And we haven't got to a thunderclap yet, but we're working towards it because we need you to get ready. You want to go to heaven? It's going to be noisy. It's going to be shouty. It's going to be all of that. And we need to get ready. I like that. That... My rugby coach has always said you practice like you, you play like you practice. And so if we're going to get to heaven and, and it's going to be that exciting, that noisy, that we need to start practicing now. So we want to welcome you to Word of Faith. Now, um, I want to welcome Heinz. I'm so glad he, he came. We got him skidding in at five past six. He did the world's... Uh, uh, I, I, we arranged for him to come, and then I phoned him and I said, you need to speak to Manny, because I don't know anything about sound checks. So, and he did the world's shortest sound tech check, so I'm very... But um, why I'm also pleased that Heinz has come, is we've come through four years, hard years, through lockdown, lockdown, just, we've just gone through the four-year anniversary. And do you know that Heinz was booked to come and sing for us on Friday, East, Good Friday, Easter in 2020. And so this is the last thing that was outstanding. It's the last, you know how there were things that fell away and you try to bring them back for word of faith. This was the last thing. In many ways, the Lord has been so good to us during this period on um, we are a bold church, and the, our last staff meeting before they locked us away. They locked you away too, so and look at me like that. I said, we have to have a goal of being coming out bigger out of lockdown than we went in. And the Lord has done that for us. The Lord has extended our, uh, our attendances in our church. He's given us a huge online ministry. We've got We've got 128 followers in Afghanistan, for instance. The Lord has expanded us so dramatically, and we want to give Him praise. But it's really nice to tick, to tick the last box. So we're excited about that. I'm going to do two more things, and then I'm going to hand over to, three more things. So you, yeah, and maybe you're not in the church. Maybe you haven't been to a church for a while. And you've thought, wow, actually, I, I quite like what's happened here. I like practicing for heaven. I like the, you know, hallelujahs, like, they're not thunderclaps, but we're getting there. Um, I like that there's a church that believes in the presence of the Lord. And so what we're going to do is this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock, we are going to invite anybody who wants to learn more about the church how to get involved, how to be part of the church, we are going to have a pizza, a free pizza evening. Who likes, let me just quickly check, who likes pizza? <laughs> my, usher, my usher was the most enthusiastic of the lot. So what we want to do is we want to hand out invites so they just, 
you could, if you lose yours, don't worry, we're not checking at the door, taking them in on Wednesday. But it's something to remember that you need to be here on, on, sun, on Wednesday the 3rd at 7 o'clock to find more, out more about being in Word of Faith. And so we want to give you an invite. So if you want to come and you want free pizza, please raise your hand now so we can give you an invite. I see your hands going up in the front over there. Um, please raise your hand so our ushers can see over there. We'd love you to be part of Word of Faith. This is your chance. Up on the gallery, there's a guy over there in the middle who wants an invite. Ushers, over there in the middle. There's a whole lot over there. There's a guy there who seems incredibly keen on pizza or joining the church. Both. You're here already on Wednesday. Okay. Invites over there. Guys, we need some invites over there in the middle. Ashes. Have we got to, Eugene, have we got to the middle yet? Oh, you're still busy over there. Okay. We'll wait. It's fine. We want as many as people as possible to come hear about how to get involved in church. And if you want to check us out, this Sunday, I'm going to be preaching Resurrection Sunday. We have praise and worship like that. We've got an 8 o'clock and a 10 o'clock service. Um, we, we run about an hour and a half each service, somewhere around there. Um, and we want to invite you this Sunday to church because it's Easter. And although we all know that Easter is about showing that you had a better Easter than the next duck, it should be about the resurrection of Jesus. And so I want to encourage you to be at church this Sunday, 8 and 10 o'clock. And I'm going to be preaching on the great hope. So... We had amazing services this morning. The Lord was good to us. So, I want to read to you from 2 Kings and 2 Kings 8. Um, let me try and remember what the scripture was. There it is. See, how, see what an organized church we are. <laughs> Have a little help from my friends. One day Elisha went to the town of Shunem. A wealthy woman lived there, and she urged him to come to her home for a meal. After that, whenever she, he passed that way, he would stop there for something to eat. She said to her husband, I'm sure that this man who stops in from time to time is a holy man of God. Let's build a small room for him on the roof and furnish it with a bed, a table, a chair, a lamp. Then he will have a place to stay whenever he comes by. Now, Basically, what this is, is this was a woman who had a heart for the church, or the heart for the men of God of that time, the heart, a heart for the prophet. And so what she did is she would contribute to him and help him as he ministered, first by giving meals, and then he, would, he actually, she built something, and back then building was more complicated than it is now. And they built a, a room for him so that whenever he came by, he, his needs were provided for. So that's all great and well, and it's good. But then, in return, she had always wanted a son. And Elisha prophesied a son to her, and she had a son. So, you see, when you look after the man of God... God, God, you're opening the door for the blessing of the Lord. But it gets even better than that. Her, her son dies. And she calls Elisha, and Elisha takes him to that very same room, the room that she had built for the man of God. And she lays, he lays the son down on the bed, and he... And he raises her son, her only son from the dead. 
in the very place where she had made provision for the man of God. And so God isn't any man, is no man's debtor. When you look after the man of God, when you look after him, God will provide for you. You are opening a way, a portal for how God can bless you. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but we, this concert is absolutely free. And if the Lord, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to take an offering to pay for the costs of the concert and give the man of God an offering. But what we're going to do, but what I need you to understand is that if you don't feel like you should give in that offering, please don't give in this offering. If you don't feel like the Holy Spirit is, is, is telling you to give, then don't give. So what, we're not, I'm not trying to manipulate you. I'm not trying to push you to give. I'm giving you an opportunity to build a room for the man of God. I'm, op- I'm allowing you to have a portal into supporting God's work. Because this, in, this um, offering will not go into Word of Faith's cof- coffers per se. It'll be to the cost of the concert and, and to give Heinz some, uh, an offering. That's the, the sum total of what we're doing with this offering. And so as you give, that's what we're going to be doing. Before I, before I ask the ashes to go around, I, if you don't have cash here, that's fine. We've got, a, we've got a Yoko, you can tap there if you want. Or alternatively, you can use the QR code. Or you can pay directly into the... Um, you can pay directly into the, um, our bank account. You can just mark it as Heinz. We won't think it's tomato sauce. You must have heard that joke too many times. Sorry. <laughs> I feel sort of bad. That's a, I mean, that's a hackneyed joke. It's a bad joke. Sorry. It's like... It's, it's, it's like... My surname is, Cr- is Crumpton, but too often I've been called Crumptoner, and that's the similar, <laughs> same category. <laughs> so sorry, Heinz, but bottom line is we'll know who Heinz is. Actually, I think Heinz has left the country. Anyway, the bottom line is, not this one is here, look there is. But I'm giving you an opportunity to give and sow into the concert, into to giving Heinz an offering. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. And then if you feel to give as we pass the baskets around, please do. If you don't, that's fine too. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that we could be here together. I thank you that you've provided and will provide our needs. I ask you, Father God, that you will bless those who give. You bless those who don't give, but bless those who give. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they will see a a supernatural return as they bless the man of God. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to sow into him, into Heinz, and into his ministry. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for what you're going to do tonight. Amen. 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 You can send the baskets around. And then quickly before I ask Heinz to come up, is we have a prayer network called SA Belongs to Jesus. Now, I don't know how many of you know, but South Africa is, having, is going to have an election on the 29th of May. For the first time in my life, I don't know what the result of the election will be. The only thing that I can say for certain is that there will be a coalition Who will be in that coalition? I do not know. I have some suspicions. But to be honest, if anybody says they know for certain, they are lying to you. So, we're at a pivotal point in our country where we're at a fork in the road. We can take the low road or we can take the high road. And so what we at Word of Faith, and we've partnered with Janet Brand Hollis and 
Time to Rise and a few other organizations, we've built a prayer network called SA Belongs to Jesus. Now, I'm going to ask them to put the QR code up. What it is, is we've built a Telegram channel. Telegram is like a messaging app, and you, and you belong to the channel, and we post, and we will post um, prayers to you three times a day that we can pray for our country. Over and above that, on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of May, we will be praying for 12 hours a day, three days in a row, from 9 in the morning to 9 at night Yeah, We're going to do it live on our YouTube channel and that. Janet Brand Hollis is coming down, a few other people, and we are going to pray the glory of God into our country. And so I want to ask you to please join SA Belongs to Jesus. There's a QR code. You can just take a picture, you know, do that picture thing, and it goes through, and, uh, and, you'll, and then join it. I ask as many people as possible to join us. This is a pivotal time in our country. And so for that reason also, and on Sunday at 4 o'clock, we are linking up with Mekweng Mekweng. Mekweng Mekweng has been, uh, is running a prayer meeting at 4 o'clock on Sunday in, in Cape Town. And we are going to be linking up with it. They asked us specifically as a gateway church to be part of it. And... Um, and, and so, Mekweng Mekweng has been fasting for 70 days for our nation. Yes, that's, uh, I, I've, I've always respected people who go 40 days, 70 days is, so, so we will be part of that prayer meeting and we want to invite you to be here on Sunday at 4 o'clock to pray for our nation. I trust that you will, that you will participate and pray with us. Because we believe that God has blessing in our future. We believe that it's time for, for th that, that God's busy doing something special. And we need to pray it through. So we in encourage you to join SA Belongs to Jesus. Okay. Without any further ado, I want to invite Heinz Winkler up. He's a pastor now in Somerset West. And um, I know he's going to bless you. Hello, PE. Sorry, it's Kabecha. I must just say a word of faith to be safe. It's great to be with you. Good evening. Thank you for coming out on Good Friday. Who's having a good Friday? Having a good Friday? Wonderful. I, I love this, this bay. I, this bay has been very good to me over the last 22 years. Yes, let that sink in. 22 years. I had a few people give a double take at the airport when I landed. It was like, I know you. <laughs> and then it, it ends up being quite an interesting conversation. But uh, it's wonderful to be here with you. I know some of you might still remember the young guy that I used to be. Um, some of you might know that a couple of years ago I went into Christian music. Some of you might know that I was led by God to plant a church in COVID. Only God can do that. Not too long after I, I had to say to Word of Faith, Ish Sorne can't come. We will be breaking some laws. But it's, a, it's, a, it's great to be with you this morning. Um, I was at, at our church in Somerset West, and so I come with greetings from Love Key Church. Um, on the way here, the driver asked me, why I love key? The reason is that, that the key to salvation is the revelation of how much God loves us. And the key to living the life that He has called us to live is to love Him back. And when we love Him back, the Word says we obey Him. Amen? And that's why we call that. And we, we aim to be a church like this one where people can encounter God, this living God that loves them, can encounter the love of God. Why? Because when you encounter the love of God, you change. You align more with what God wants for you. Amen? 
And when you align more with what He wants for you, you start to reign in areas of your life. And that's what God wants for all of us. Because we are His sons and daughters made in His image. Did you know that? And His longing is, is of a father to have fellowship and communion with each one of His creations. And I want to sing with you to that good father tonight. Do you want to join me? That's a good answer. Thank you. I want to share a scripture with you as we ready ourselves. And I know, I don't know the pastor Richard called it a concert, but I, I want you to know I'm not going to approach it like a typical concert. I'm going to approach it like, hey, I'm going to sing to Jesus and you can join me. Is that good? All right. So I want us to ready our hearts tonight as we prepare to enter the throne room. You know, in Psalm 100, it's, in 100 verse 4, it says, we enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. So we have the ability to step into His presence when we choose to do so. He is always ready. He is always ready to receive us. Psalm 97 from verse 1, it says, the Lord reigns. Can someone say the Lord reigns? Let the earth rejoice. Let them... You don't have to do the whole thing, but well done. <laughs> Pastor Richard, you've raised a great, obedient church. Well done. I love that. I'm going to tell my people back home, you can learn from this church. <laughs> All right. Clouds and... Uh, let the multitude of aisles be glad. Clouds and darkness around Him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of of his throne did you know that god has a throne and it has foundations and the foundations are righteousness and justice just picture that for a moment a fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round him around about his lightnings light the world the earth sees and trembles the mountains melt like wax at the presence of the lord at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare His righteousness. Will you stand with me and praise this almighty God with me? Let's do that. Thank you, Jesus. We praise the Lord. Hey! We praise Awaken my soul, rise and sing For all that my Savior's done for me Oh, give Him His praise, worship His name All that I am, sing hallelujah Forever I'm free, come on church Forever I'm free, forever I'm changed Amen Forever my life Find by His grace hey. Oh, with every step Every breath All that I am Sing hallelujah Yeah, yeah Oh, my whole heart Oh, my soul Let everything within me Praise the Lord Through the shadow Through the let everything within me praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. we praise the Lord. Faith is my shield, your word is my sword. Amen. The greater the fight, the louder I'll roar. Hey. The spirit that gave from the grave, living in me, sing hallelujah. Stop singing? No. I won't stop singing. 
of all he's done for me I won't stop singing of all he's done for me He heard my cry, sent me on a rock Saved me from the hand of the enemy Whoa, I won't stop singing about my Savior Get excited, here we go I won't song I wrote for my Jesus to say that he is the only God who lives. He's the author of your story. You're the author of my story, the one who shapes my path. with his staff you are a faith perfecter there in trials and strife you are a great protector the one who leads to life the only God who lives the only God who saves the only God who gave his life to win along the stage
the King of glory. Amen. He's the King of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin.
into the night and through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written yes Jesus Christ my living yes is it yours too? Woo. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? Yes, the God of ages, He stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. Let's worship Him. The cross has spoken. Come on, sing it. I am forgiven. Yes, the King of kings calls me his own. Wow. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Sing it out.
grateful in this house today? Tell it what to do. David did it all the time. So we're going to do it right now. Are you ready? So come my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. Because you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul, don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul, you lying inside.
So I throw up my hand I praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart Singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So come on, my soul. Don't you get now? Yeah. <laughs> you were ready to go. I love it. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I love you guys. You're amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Let us just pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this time together. I thank you that we get to sing to you, to worship you, to lift you up. You're amazing. You're awesome. We just stand in wonder of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For who you are. For what you've done for us. And what you keep on doing for us. Thank you for word of faith, Christian center in Kabecha, Nelson Mandela Bay, for their leaders, their people, for what they're doing for the kingdom in this area. Bless them, Lord. Take them from strength to strength and glory to glory. May they experience the fullness of what you have for them. I pray for everyone here tonight that you will bless them, strengthen them, guide them, that your favor will go before them. They will experience the wonderful love of you that only you can give. But they will experience your grace, your peace, and your rest that surpasses all understanding. And I pray, Lord, that as I share a short message tonight, that you will speak to the hearts, the minds, but most importantly, the spirit of every person that hears my voice right now. Holy Spirit, lead me. And may this be all for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. You guys sing beautifully. Well done. That was great. Sure. So... When I used to do shows, normal shows, I, I had this little arrangement with my audience that whenever I needed to take a sip of water, you know, it creates this awkward silence. Like that. <laughs> so to avoid that, if I do need to take a sip of water, I would like to ask that you would praise God in that moment, and just put your focus on Him and praise Him, all right? Will you do that for me? Thank you. Let's, let's tr- test it. Works like a charm. I love it. Thank you. Can I stand over here? Is that going to mess with the cameras? Is that okay? Nothing, I'm just going to do that then. (laughs) All right. So why am I here tonight? Why are any of us here in this moment? It's because God has an appointment with each and every one of us. He is the one who is sovereign. He is the one who holds everything together. He is the one who orders our steps, even if we think we are ordering them. I remember when I visited Israel for the first time, the guide said, you think that you planned and paid to get here, but I'm telling you now, God ordained your steps to be here, and he has an appointment with you, and I want to say the same to you tonight. You think that someone, maybe someone dragged you here. You're like, I don't want to go on Good Friday to a church. What is that about? Some of you wanted to be here, because maybe you remember some of my old shows or something, and you saw this massive banner outside and wonder what's that about 
But whatever the reason you think it might be, it's because God has an appointment with you. There's this beautiful thing in our nation. I don't know if all of you are aware of it. When our Zulu brothers say, Saubona, it means, I see you. And I hope I say that right. Someone's going to correct me maybe. But I love that. I love how you would say to someone, I don't just say hello. I don't just acknowledge that you exist and you pass me by. I see you for who you are. And I want to tell you tonight that God is saying to each of you, Saubona, I see you, my son. I see you, my daughter. I made you in my image. And I have a plan for your life. Now, that was the easy part of what I wanted to share with you. And I want to pose a question to you that really challenged me. That kind of wrecked my life in a way. The question is this. Because it is Good Friday, and because we are thinking and commemorating what our Lord Jesus Christ did on a cross over 2,000 years ago, and the impact it had on eternity, I want to ask this question. Is what you are living for worth what Christ died for? Is what you are living for worth what Christ died for? You see, when we study the Bible, it's very clear that Jesus is our example in everything. And I can go into detail on some very interesting ways that he is. Did you know that he didn't get a matrix download of the Torah? He actually went into the synagogue and read it and studied it because it was actually normal for boys by the age of 13 to know the whole Torah. So he went there to study the word of his father. He was 100% God, 100% man, and he chose to live completely as a man, completely dependent on his Father in heaven to show us what's possible. The Bible says Jesus was tempted in every way known to man, yet without sin. That means he's been, he was tempted by things that you've been tempted by, yet he did not sin. Jesus is our example in everything. He often disappeared. And the disciples were like, where did Jesus go? And he's praying, spending time with his father. And then he would say things like, I only do what my father says I must do. I only say what my father says I must say. Completely dependent on the father. He's our example in everything. I want to give you one before I go into what I want to show you. One that blew my mind. I don't know if you've heard this before or if you've figured this out. And this is actually more of a, a Christmas message in a way. But I'm going to give it to you quickly just to show you once again how Jesus is our example in everything. So I want to ask you a question. You have to actually use your brain now. Are you ready? How many of you are really clever? Anyone? <laughs> Some prideful people in the place. No, I'm kidding. All right, so I want to ask you a question. First, give you some facts, and then I'll ask you a question. So when you read the genealogy in Matthew of Jesus, what do we see? We see that the genealogy of Jesus goes back all the way to actually Adam. But we, the most referenced one that we, ha, well, that we should know as Christians is that he's, he comes from the line of David, the root of Jesse, who's David's dad. You, have you heard that before? All right. Now, how many of you know that David was a man after God's own heart, but it wasn't exactly perfect? He committed murder. He committed adultery. He was a, pretty much a bad father to his own children. And you know that other people in that line were murderers, adulterers, and prostitutes. You think your family is dysfunctional. 
Go read it. Now, the Bible says that Jesus is the incorruptible seed. How many of you know that the line that is explained in Matthew is corrupted, corruptible? Do you recognize that? So Joseph is betrothed to Mary. Does Joseph have a crown? It's easy. He doesn't. He's like, just say no. <laughs> I'm going to ask some rhetorical questions that I hope you know. Joseph, the guy betrothed to Mary, does not have a crown. Does he have a kingdom? No. What is he doing by day? Woodwork. He's a carpenter. Is he royalty? He comes from a royal bloodline, but he doesn't wear a crown. He doesn't have a throne. Yet, he is chosen. Mary is probably 15 years, 16 years old, max. A virgin, betrothed to a man, she's chosen. To be what? The parents of Jesus. Are you qualified? I can promise you they didn't feel qualified. But listen to this. All right, I have to get back. Otherwise, I'm going to digress and preach a whole sermon on that, which is not what I want to do. So, <laughs> Joseph is a carpenter. He's betrothed to Mary. Mary gets pregnant. How many of you know that Mary and Joseph didn't have the New Testament? <laughs> so, where's my young brothers that are like 18, 20, 19, 20 years old? Anyone in the house? Young brothers? All right. Now, say the girl that you like, that you think... God told me that, oh, she's my wife, okay? I know you're here in the house somewhere. Now, I want you to imagine that that girl who told you that she's saving herself for you comes to you like this. So, Joe, the Holy Spirit made me pregnant. Would you believe her? <laughs> Heck no. So Joseph makes plans to silently divorce Mary. Why? Because a betrothal in that time was more serious than an engagement is now. It was like you will marry. It's like, so he had to actually break it off. Then he has a dream. The angel says to him, Joseph, I want you to go to Mary and marry her because that child is from the Holy Spirit. And I want you to name that child Jesus, for he is the Savior of your people and of the world. Now, what happens when a man chooses to take a child that is not biologically his, and make that child his. What do we call that? I want to hear it louder. Moy. Who impregnated Mary? Who did not impregnate Mary? So how is it possible that the line of Joseph, going back all the way to Adam can be called the line of Jesus that he's born out of. How is it possible? You've already figured it out. Through? <laughs> what does Romans 8 tell us when we get born again? That by the Spirit of? We cry, Abba. What did I say right before that? Jesus is our example in, even in adoption. Do you see that? All right. Ooh, are you with me? All right. I want to show you something. Can we please pull up Romans 12 from verse 1, please? Actually, I know it, so you can pull it up. 
Not the NLT, the NKJV, please. New King James. This is more powerful. He's, he's, this is his words in the New King James. He says, Brothers, I beseech you. I beseech you. That's powerful language. He says to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and blameless. Now, let's pause there. Do we have it up? Yes. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable service. Another translation says, which is your proper worship. Now, what is Paul saying? And to whom is he saying it? Context is very important. The church in Rome was a divided church. It was divided between Jewish believers and Gentile believers. What does Paul say? Who is the gospel for first? The Jews and then the Gentiles. Who did Jesus preach to? Who did he heal? Who did he share the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount with? The Jews. What did he say to a Samaritan woman when she came to him and said, please heal my daughter? He said to her, no. What? He said, I'm here for the children of Israel. <gasps> but that's offensive. How can Jesus say that? And then she said, but even the dogs need, to, need some crumbs from the table. And then because of her faith, Jesus healed her daughter. But he didn't want to at first because that was not his mission. Anyway, that's a side note. Go and freak out about that later. So, Paul is now writing to a divided church. Romans 12 is already is deep into this letter to the church in Rome. Most scholars believe that the church in Rome was started by Jewish believers who were at the day of Pentecost. Because we read in Acts that there were Jewish believers there from Rome. And they were part of the 3,000 that got saved that day. So they went back home and they planted a church. That church grew. Some Gentiles joined it. Then the emperor heard the Jews fight about a guy called Christos. He kicked them out because he didn't like anything that looked like a revolt. All the Jews out of Rome. Now the Gentiles were like, okay, I guess we'll just do the church thing. And so they kept building a church. Then a new Caesar came in charge, emperor, and he called the Jews back because they were good for business. Oh, that's funny. Come on. <laughs> Where's my Jewish brothers in the house? Anyone? So... He brought them back. Now the Jewish, came, Jewish believers came back to a church that was run by Gentiles. And we start getting this. Because the Jewish believers were legalistic. While the, the Gentile believers were running for license to do whatever they want. So we had legalism meets license. But what they were really after was liberty. And these people are fighting because the Jews want the Gentiles to be circumcised. And they're like, no. <laughs> and all the Gentile men in the house go, amen. <laughs> all right. But they are fighting among each other. And Paul is trying desperately through the book of Romans to tell both of these groups of people, you don't get it. You are legalistic and trying to do it in your own strength. You are taking license and using the grace of God to sin and do whatever you want. What are you doing? Similar Tony has to the church in Galatia where he says, Why do you try to finish in the flesh what started in the spirit? And we have this divide. And he's speaking to a church. Why? Because the church is God's plan for the world. It is his one and only plan A. There's no plan B. This is the connection point between heaven and earth where God comes, his presence comes, and resides among the people of God, and lives are changed. Amen? And Paul is trying to tell this church, if you keep on bickering about nonsense, you will be ineffective in the kingdom of God. 
He tells it straight to the Jews. He tells it straight to the Gentiles. And by the time he gets to Romans 12, he's going, my brothers, I beseech you by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and blameless before God, which is your reasonable service. And you know what he goes on to do in the rest of Romans 12? He tells them how to do church. He tells them how they need to think less of themselves and not more than they ought to. He tells them that they, if they have a gift, go do the gift. Practice that gift. Be excellent at that gift, but part of the body of Christ. Your gift is not your title. It's your function. Amen? But let's see how he starts this chapter. I beseech you, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, blameless before God. Now, what did Jesus do when he died on the cross? I love the language. I think Jesus says it once, and then we see it happen in the garden. He can at any moment call on a legion of angels to save him but he doesn't why because he is willingly presenting his body as a living sacrifice holy and blameless because he knows what's at stake and even though he was terrified and anxious and depressed, sweating blood in the garden of Gethsemane, calling on his Father in heaven to say, if there's any other way, please let this cup pass from me. Because he knew what was coming. And he said, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will. And then he presented his body willingly and he let we sang it in, in well no I shared it this morning we sang it in one of the songs he let the soldiers take him away because who has authority in that position the soldiers who think they have or the king the, the son of the king of, or the king of the name above all names the son of God the Son of God. He knows His authority, but He also knew that He had a role to play. Jesus is our example in everything. He was the first to present His body a living sacrifice. He was sacrificed alive on that cross. What does a sacrifice normally look like to a Jewish and Gentile believer in the first century? It's an animal on a fire. Paul is saying, choose to die to self. And you present and put yourself on the altar of the holy fire of God so that everything in you that's you and flesh and selfish and want to rule your life will burn away so that you can only burn for Jesus and that you can only serve Him. And you serve Him by serving your local church. Because he goes on to explain that is the bride of Christ. How many of you know that Jesus is coming back for a pure and spotless bride? What does the bride consist of? The church. What does the church consist of? You, sissy. You, my brother. And every other person around this world that say, I are a Christian. And I promise you now, most of them have no idea what they are saying when they say that. 78% of our people in the last census in South Africa said, I are a Christian. Really? 78% of like 55 million people are Christian and our country looks like this? Something is wrong. Now it's easy to go like this. It's them. Tonight I want to ask you the difficult question. If you are part of the body of Christ, if you are part of the bride of Christ, 
and the bride of Christ is standing with a white dress before Jesus, waiting to be received by him, the perfect bridegroom for the perfect bride. And you are somewhere here, a part of the dress. Are you clean? Are you pure? Are you contributing to the bride being ready? Or are you perhaps detracting? Are you perhaps distracted from why you are really here? Do you wear the label of Christian, but you have not died to self? You've never presented your body a living sacrifice. You just say, yes, I'm a Christian. But it means nothing. Is what you are living for worth what Christ died for? We cannot wear the label of Christian lightly. He paid the ultimate price so that you can call yourself a little Christian, a little Christ, following the Christ, following the way of the Messiah, the Son of God. He paid the ultimate price. There's a side to the gospel that we all like. Jesus saved me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And that is true. It's a free gift by grace through faith. I can receive this gift. John 1 says that everyone who receives Jesus earned the right, listen to the legal language, earned the right to be called children of God. Yes, but everyone's a child of God. No. Everyone is created by God, and in that sense, yes, He's their Father. But according to the Bible, you are only an heir of God and a co-heir with Jesus Christ if you've actually received Jesus. I always tell people, the gospel is the free gift that costs you everything. Because Jesus stretched out his arms on the cross, presenting himself as a living sacrifice for you, for me, for all people in past, present, and future. And he did it for us, for our sins. He did it for our healing. He did it once and for all. And he said at the end, it's finished. He has done his part. How will we respond to his part already being done? He said, this is my body. I'm the head of the body. My body has a job. The job is to get more people like you. What did God say in the beginning? Or like our president says, in the beninginginginging. <laughs> what happened in the beninginginginging? I forgot this is going out live. All right. So... Okay, focus. <laughs> in the beginning, listen, in the beginning, God created mankind in his image and likeness. Are we in agreement? If you're not, you're wrong. Because that's what the Bible says. Male and female, he created them. Period. I won't stop there. Um, so, and then, he, then he, the Bible says he blessed them and he commanded them, be fruitful and multiply. What does multiply mean? Become more. More of what? He just created them in his image and he said, be fruitful and multiply. I made you in my image, now become more of my Then sin came into the world and caused this chasm we've sang, sung about tonight. Because God is holy and righteous and he can have no fellowship with sin. And so the story started of how his love for his people moved him to a place of reconciling himself back to the people that he created. That at every, every chance they get, they turn their backs on him and go after idols.
Focus. <laughs> this is like a big classroom. Focus. Okay. Stay with me. This is important. In the beginning, he said, this is what he wants. This is God's will. Do you think God's will changes? His son, Jesus, comes into history in the timeline. God is outside of time, but he brings his son into the timeline in our timeline about 22,000 years ago. And on that cross, the one who the Bible calls is made in the image of God presents his body as a living sacrifice. And then we learn in the New Testament so powerfully over and over and over again that through Jesus Christ, the perfect image of God, we become children of God and earn the right to be called image bearers of Christ. And then the Bible says in Matthew 28, go and make more, go and multiply. What? The image of God that's now in you. Hello, the plan never changed. But you will only multiply what you have. You cannot multiply nothing. One times zero is nothing. You have to be a body that has present, you have chosen to present yourself a living sacrifice so that you can tell other people what it means and what it looks like. And they can look at your life and go, Wow, you really live for Jesus. Instead of going, um, you say one thing, but you do another thing, I'm out. And this is what we have in the world today. 78% of people say, I are a Christian. But they have no idea what it means. Many of them are like I was. A 16-year-old, in the kerk, Afrikaans, a Witsian. I went to a camp for Christian leaders. I was convinced I am a Christian. So much so that I went to a leadership camp. And at the leadership camp in October 1994 in Kleinmont, I was standing there and I had an encounter with the living God that changed me forever. And I realized for the first time that I knew facts about God, but I didn't know Him personally. And that night, I felt, as physically as you can feel in the spirit, how the Father came and he put his arms around me and he said, I love you, my son. Yo, it wrecked me. I cried and I cried and I cried. And I was never the same again. Made many silly mistakes along the way. Fell back. Backslid because I didn't have people in my life to help me. But in 2002, I met a pastor who said to me, I want to disciple you. And then he told me what discipleship was, and I was like, near donkey. Because <laughs> I was enjoying saying I'm a Christian, but not really living it all the time. I had a lack of integrity as a Christian. I wanted to have my foot in the world and my foot in the, in the kingdom and kind of hope that I just slid into heaven one day. And then he started to help me to see that I need to present my body as a living sacrifice the same way that Jesus did. He is my example in everything. And the more that I started to choose to die to self the more of Jesus starting to come through me. Because you see, there are three steps to salvation. I don't know if you know this. There's sanctification, oh, sorry, justification, sanctification, glorification. The first time you give your heart to Jesus and you say, I want to follow you, you are now justified. It is just if I'd never sinned. And you get your ticket to heaven. But if you stop there, you miss out on everything God has for you on this side of heaven. Because then the journey starts, the journey of sanctification. Justification is freedom from the penalty of sin. Sanctification is freedom from the presence of sin. Oh, sorry, from the um, power of sin. 
And glorification is one day when we either die here and we enter heaven or he comes back and we are glorified with him, then we are free from the presence of sin. Some of you here have chosen the first, but you've gotten stuck somewhere along the sanctification road because you stopped choosing to present your body a living sacrifice. Some of you have never done the first step. And there's something happening on the inside of you right now. Because the word of God is a double-edged sword that cuts through bone and marrow. And I've been saying scriptures out loud tonight. The sound, the frequency of the word, which is Jesus himself, hits you and it changes you. It has to. Because God says in Isaiah 55, my word will not return void to me. So I know that the seed, which is Jesus himself, the seed of the word has been sown and it has changed some of you already. If you're moving around uncomfortably and looking for a way to get out, that's you. (laughs) I want to create an opportunity for each one tonight to either choose for the first time or choose anew to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and blameless before God. Can we do that? Can I have someone playing a Nice pad, please, if there is someone still around. Will you close your eyes, all of you, please? Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for this moment. I thank you so much that you are in this place and that you are with us right now. I thank you so much that that your word is so powerful and that I know it has landed in good soil tonight. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you will come in a powerful way like only you can, and that you will minister to each person here in the house. I pray that in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you are in that first category, you realize, man, I'm one of those. I'm a statistic I grew up culturally as a Christian, but I never gave my life to Jesus. I've never made a decision to present my body a living sacrifice. I've never made a decision to give my all for His glory and for His kingdom. If that's you tonight, I really want to pray with you. And I really want you to find a spiritual home where you can take your next steps. So will you please raise your hand if tonight is the night where you want to say yes to Jesus and follow him as your Lord and Savior. This is the moment where you realize I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I cannot save myself. My parents who went to church cannot save me. I need to make a personal decision to follow Christ. If that's you, will you slip up your hand and hold it up for us, please? Please lift up those hands and say, yes, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hands are going up. Hands are going up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. I want to ask now that everyone will stand up. Will everyone please stand? Everyone in this congregation, please stand. And I want to invite those who put their hands up to come to the front right now. Come to the front right now and make a public declaration that I am giving my life to Jesus. I am making a decision to follow Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come. Come. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. This is your moment where you can say yes to the one who created you and loves you so much. Jesus is standing ready and waiting for you right now. Come to the front. Come on, keep encouraging them. Keep encouraging them. This is your time. This is your moment. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on down. Come on down. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. You know what I see before me? I see potential. I see potential that only God can put inside of each person. I also see maybe the guilt and the shame that you carry because of your past. I know I've been there. But tonight, everything changes. Amen? And when I say that, it's not just because you're going to say a prayer. It's because you're going to choose to give everything that you are to Jesus Christ. And then say, I'm going to take a step of faith. I'm going to get baptized. And I'm going to become part of a local church. Why? Because that's the body of Christ. And I'm going to, every day, learn more, grow more, so that I can be the best part of the body of Christ that I can be. Amen? All right, so if you are ready to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and blameless before God, will you please pray after me? And I want to invite everyone to pray this with us so we can help them and support them. Amen? Amen? Come on. This is a huge moment. There's a party in heaven. This is massive. All right? So close your eyes, open your hands to heaven, and pray after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. I repent of all of my sins. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And that today, I leave that behind and everything changes. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And from now on, will be Lord of my life. I choose to die to self, to present my body a living sacrifice for the kingdom of God. Holy Spirit, come and fill me, come and strengthen me, and lead me so that I can live a life of obedience to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So what we're wanting to do is we want to pray with you some more and help you to know what you're doing, why you've come up, and, and help you to be connected into the body of Christ and into a spiritual home, as Heinz was saying. And so what we want to do is we want to take you through. We've got prayer rooms under the gallery. And you see that dashing, handsome young, uh, sorry, older gentleman with white hair. <laughs> Please follow him. He's going to take you through into the prayer room. So if you've got your bag here in the benches or whatever, please go get that. Don't leave your stuff there, but please. Um, Charles, can you take them through? Okay. Could you follow them? Um, okay. Let's give them a hand. Now I'm going to hand back over to Hans. One last song, maybe. Hallelujah. All right. I have one more prayer that I want to pray. And it's around this question. Is what I'm living for worth what Christ died for? Have I really become that body that is presented to God a living sacrifice? And this is something that I can tell you from my own experience is a daily decision. It doesn't just happen once and you're like, okay, cool, tick the box. No, it's a daily choice. What did Jesus say? Pick up your cross daily every day and this is part of it so if you are here tonight and you realize i've given my life to christ i love him but maybe you have you don't have the fear of the lord or the trust of the lord or that you tremble at his word or that you've lost that first love of making him first in everything in your life maybe you compromised a little bit on reading the word and praying every day compromise 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 to the point that you don't really do it anymore so there's a lack of intimacy 
Intimacy means into me you see. Do you give God the opportunity to really see into you so that he can give you the opportunity to see into him? You see, God is a father. He is a loving bridegroom who wants to have intimacy with each and every one of us. And that can only happen when we willingly choose with passion and excitement to spend time with him. How many of you are married here? Any married couples? Those hands went up very slowly and half-heartedly. <laughs> Needs to be way more excited. One or two men are awake. They know that their wives are keeping score. So they went like this. I'm so married. I love it. Now, married people and those who want to be married, I want to ask you something. If you are married and you are on a date with your wife... And you look across to your wife, and she seems disinterested, bored, and irritated, and on her phone, not engaging with you. How will that make you feel? How much intimacy will you have in that conversation? Zero. But what do we do with the living God, the master of the universe who gave his only begotten son so that you may have life and life in abundance? We sometimes do just that. Why do you get up in the morning? Why do you go to work? Is it just to make some money, to keep a roof over your head, and to feed your children? Or are you getting up first for God? You see, the Bible says, seek the kingdom of God first, and all these other things will be added unto you. So my next prayer is for those who are humble enough to acknowledge that they're not there, but they want to be. I'm going to pray with you because I want to grow daily. So if you're willing, will you please just raise, I'm not going to call you to the front. We're just going to see by raise of hands. I want to recommit my life to Jesus, or I want to step in deeper, or I want to be that living sacrifice. If that's you, will you please raise your hand and say, yes, that's me. I want to pray that prayer. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come home. Come home. Take him seriously. He takes you seriously. Choose to be the son of God that you've been called to be. Choose to be the daughter of God that you've been called to be. Amen. So I want you to take it. I want to pray a prayer, and then I'll pray with you, because I feel this is a very important moment. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to baptize all of us in the fear of the Lord. I know that sounds weird to some of you, but the Bible is filled with the importance of having a healthy, holy fear of a living, holy God, and to tremble at the Word of God, to not just see it as another book or a page, to not talk about God as the old bully upstairs or the old man upstairs, but to have reverent fear of a holy God. Jesus said when he was preaching, do not fear man who can kill your body but do nothing to your soul. Fear the God who can kill your body and put your soul in hell. Jesus said that about his father in heaven. What? Yes. This is serious business. Why does a nation that says 78% of people are Christian look the way it does? Because of this. A lack of the fear of God and a lack of relationship with Him. That's the reason. Are you going to be part of the change? Are you going to be a part of that garment of the bride of Christ that's holy and pure and blameless? Are you? Tonight's the time to decide. How do you do it? You die to self daily. You rock up at church and you serve you serve even with people that irritate you because those are the people who are going to shape your character. If you get offended, you haven't died. Listen to me. If you get offended, you haven't died. Who had all the, all the reasons in the world to be offended? Jesus. Was he offended? No. He forgave. Why? Because he presented his body. A living sacrifice, holy and blameless unto God. 
A dead thing cannot be offended. Why are churches divided? Me, myself, and I, I'm important. My opinion matters. I want this. I want that. This should be done this way. Blah, blah, blah. Guys, I've been running a church just for three years, and I've had this. Selfish, entitled people who are running around like little boys and girls, four-year-old tantrums on the floor. And all I told them is, die to self and serve, because that's what the Bible says. This church and every Bible-believing, life-giving church in this nation can change the nation in a day. If every believer in that church says, I'm going to present my body a living sacrifice, I'm going to rock up for service, and I'm going to keep serving consistently and lovingly, even if everybody irritates me, because that just means I haven't died. So I'm going to wake up and say, Lord, I'm going to die to self, I forgive those people, and I'm going to go again, because I love you. If they hate me, I will love them. If they irritate me, I will bless them. If they persecute me, I will love them. That's what the Bible teaches us to do anyway. Who's your neighbor? Who's your neighbor? Who did Jesus say is your neighbor? He told Jewish people, your neighbor is Samaritans. That was a curse word. They hated each other. There was massive racism between Jewish and Samaritans. He said to them, the Samaritan is the good Samaritan. He helped the Jew out of the hole and paid to have him healed. Do you love your neighbor? I'm going to give you an easier one. Just love the people in your church. Just start there. Just love these people well. Die to self, love them well, serve them, help them, be a part of what this church is doing. Go to Pastor Richard and everyone under him and say, how can I serve you? I think these are my gifts. I think I can help in these ways. Not in a way of like, I should. No. How can I serve? Make yourself lower. Say, I'm going to think less of myself than I ought to because the Bible instructs me to do that. And I'm going to say, how can I serve? Are you still waiting to pray the prayer? Let's close our eyes and pray together. Lord Jesus, I love you. Thank you for what you've done on the cross. Thank you for being my example in everything. You lead by example. And tonight I choose to follow you as my leader. So I choose to lay down my life. I choose a new to make you Lord of my life. I choose anew to make the word of God my true north. I choose anew to passionately and wholeheartedly seek after you in the mornings, during the day, and before I go to bed. I love you. And I'm going to live that way from this day forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. I want to thank Heinz for um, coming and ministering so powerfully. We are going to, um, we've got a service at 8 o'clock Sunday morning, 10 o'clock Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday. And I really want to encourage you to take what Heinz has said too hot and be here on Sunday. Amen. 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 So I'm going to close in prayer. I'm going to th- I want to thank you for coming. I'm going to close in prayer. Don't sprint for the door. I'm, I'm, we're just going to pray, and then you can go. But let's pray. Father, we ask you in your precious name that the truths that have been preached here today and the experience of your Holy Spirit will be sealed in our hearts. I pray, Father, that it will be transformational, that we will commit to do what you've called us to do, to follow you, to serve you. I thank you for all those who've decided to follow Jesus. I bless them. And Father, I pray for leaders in our 
to be brought into our church and leaders in our church to be raised up. And Father God, we pray for a firehouse on every street. You promised us a firehouse on every street in the city, a house full of the Holy Spirit touching the, the, that street. And we call upon you to do that. In Kabecha, in Nelson Mandela Bay, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Remember the free pizza at 8 o'clock uh, on, on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Bless you guys.